what I'm, what I'm suggesting that we talk about, and I've tried to find ways to say this, is um, what I would call the 10,000 Nikios uh, approach, which is, you know, at 10,001 Nikios, there's world peace. <laughs> or if, if I could do Nikio strong enough to put a Nikio on Arnold Schwarzenegger, then there'd be world peace. And, <laughs> and what, what I think is going on, and you'll forgive me, please, for just indulging my thinking here, uh, yeah. is that Nikio, all the techniques of Aiki, oh, Sensei left us as a way to practice the art, the Do, the way of being that's more centered, more blending, more connected, more unified, and that as such, we could create a beautiful world. But I think, uh, I always quote Patrick, who said, I always knew there was more than technique, but I didn't know what it was and I didn't know how to get there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think in our conversations, that's what we've been playing with. So here's what I'm inviting, is anything you can do to help people know what there is in the way of what's available, what might be a possible doorway or access to what's available, what Aikido really could produce beyond practicing techniques, which I think does make people feel better, and that by itself is good. But I think that for so many people, they have some dream of Aikido, and some don't even have that dream. But it's just no idea of what, what it is or how to get there. So if that makes any sense, if that's enough, I can stop. Uh, and you know me, I could talk forever. So. Would you want to do this like an interview or do you want me to just talk? Um, again, I'm 100% open to any way you'd like to do it. And I am absolutely inviting you to just talk. And if you want to ask me for a question, I certainly will, will do my best to help stimulate your thinking. But... Um, I know that there's something fantastic, a magical, um, transcendent, I can't find the word for it, that Aikido has given me. Um, it's, helped me sure. it's helped me live in a completely different world than I would have lived in. And I have done my best to pass that on to people because that's where my value was, not particularly in the technical forms, much as like Christopher Lee just said, you know, I'm a martial arts geek. I love doing it. I love the, all learning all this stuff and rolling around on the mat and throwing people and all that. But there's been something magical. And, you know, you've seen enough of my videos to know what my rap is. But my feeling, yeah. uh, the way I would say it, some people will hear, but a lot of people won't. Yeah. This maybe they'll hear the way he said it or the way you said it or the way I had Strozzi on, the way he said it, Quentin was on. Uh, I'm hoping that between all of us, as Don Juan said, so people can begin to see reality in the crack between the, the worlds. Awesome. Awesome. What a great intention, man. Hey, did you, are they, did you just record them and you haven't edited and, and posted those videos yet? Um, I have recorded and edited Richard and Quentin. I am in the process. Of, Christopher spoke to me for like uh, – an hour over over an hour which zoom doesn't i thought we'd only get 40 minutes so that was great they let us run on and um so i put the whole hour up minus just a few stuff at the end well of i was i was looking for it i did i looked on your on the moon i haven't, moon I haven't made it public yet because i don't have anyone's permission and i want to be like you i want to be just righteous i can make sure that everyone completely approves what i'm doing before i make it public so I put them up, I've shown them to Richard and whatever, and uh, as soon as I have permission, I will make them public and I will let you know. I assume you're subscribed, so you'll get a notice anyway. I'm um, not actually, but I'll keep an eye on it. Well, you can hit the subscribe button or I'll just send you a- I, It's a subscribe on, on uh, extraordinarylistening.com? On the Moon Sensei channel, on YouTube. I actually am, I know I am subscribed there, but I don't get notices. Huh. Maybe, I probably turned it off or something, so it's not to be- okay. Bothered okay, so is that enough to say, you know, my sense, you know, what's Budo? Why Aikido? Why are you still here? What do you really care about? What do you think is the most misunderstood or uh, most? Can, it, can I make a suggestion? Let's just do an interview. It work. You know, I can, I can give a talk, but, you know, I, I, we All can right, do an Miles, interview. Right let's do an interview. Thank you for being with us. It's nice to have you. 
I appreciate all the work you've done, and I'd like to hear more about what you see in Aikido, especially what you think is unknown or misunderstood or not understood about what the art has to offer beyond the fact that it's the way most people understand it basically is a martial art uh, to, to handle a physical confrontation. And the, the way that um, drives me a little nuts, but the way that people always say, oh yeah, isn't that the one where you use their energy against them? Yeah, right. A, a, a myth of Aikido, if there ever was one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, you know, that, that, is, that, is the common, that is the common description of Aikido, and I guess, I guess it's valid to a certain level, but it's actually one that, that locks people into duality. And, and whatever Aikido is, you know, we, we, use the, we like to play with the word beyond quite a bit, beyond technique, beyond form, beyond styles, beyond organizations, all that stuff. Whatever the beyond is, it is, it is beyond duality. It's that place that, that doesn't, you know, where the duality doesn't exist. Are we on? We're recording? We're recording. Oh, yes. Great, great. So it's, it's beyond that place where, where duality uh, exists. It's, it re kind of reminds me of that famous Rumi poem, you know, uh, beyond the world of right and wrong, beyond ideas of right and wrong, there's a field. And I'll meet you there. And that's Aikido. That field is, for my opinion, that, that field is Aikido. The trick is, as you said, how do you get there from here? Because you can't get there from here. So that's the whole kind of, you know, in a way, it's the existential dilemma. And at the same time, it's the, it's the, it's, it's, it's the, that's the hard question in Aikido. Um, you, even before I'd met you, uh, I, I, I'd met uh, Peter Ralston. I know that you had some, some time with Peter Ralston and I suppose he was an influence uh, in your martial arts uh, to a certain extent. Uh, he was for me, and dramatically. He was on the, on the, uh series apparently that's awesome that's awesome yeah i plan on bringing him in a little bit later as well and because uh, i i was in iwama practicing you know hardcore really hardcore traditional aikido and um getting better faster stronger but on that 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 wheel of duality you know that closed loop that you get better faster stronger and you know, until you get weaker slower and you know Older. worse <laughs> yeah right exactly and uh I, I i was i was at my peak in iwama you know and i was I, I left there when i was 34 i'd spent eight years there and my knees i was like i was like you know i'd worked my way up the higher the hierarchy i was one of the the heavy hitters in the dojo i guess not necessarily senior because the, the hierarchy is rigid there but you know i was i could hold my own with everybody and you know force other people to hold their own with me and to one extent or another that was just the culture there and, um, but I was, I was, I was getting that sense that, you know, this isn't really, I feel like I'm in a loop here. It's not exactly taking me where I want to be because emotionally I still felt, uh, not very masterful. And psychologically I was beginning to understand some of the, you know, the, the, the shit that made up my own psychological experience, but I was not masterful and skillful there as either. Certainly spiritually, I had a lot of spiritual intention, but it wasn't getting it. And that was a big motivator for me because where I wasn't getting it, where I wasn't masterful, where I didn't feel like I, I, um, I, I had the technical skill to work my way through things, I was suffering. You know, the basic existential stuff. You climb a ladder, you get to the top of the wall, and you realize, well, you know, what am I doing up here? This is, you know, where's the – my original in, intention that was, uh, you know, oh, sensei, just seeing oh, sensei in a book, yeah? opened a seed that, that had been that planted from whatever lifetimes before. And it was just like, you know, I was 14 and it took me, what, seven, eight years before I could actually get to a dojo and train full time, but I never turned back. And that seed had opened, but it wasn't getting nourished. It kind of was with, you know, with, with all that kind of, you know, you can spend years developing, climbing that ladder that doesn't, that kind of ends at the top of a wall that, that's not spiritual. And as I got there, I, I was realizing, you know, there's got to be something more. There's got to be something more. And the reason I mentioned Peter Ross is because I was, I'd come into contact, me and Patrick and Lewis and a few other people were passing around his book on effortless being, I believe. Effortless, power. effortless power. The way of yeah, effortless right. power or something like that. And we're reading this thing and I, you know, and there wasn't a single picture. I'm like, what the hell kind of martial arts book is this? Where are the, where are the pictures? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at it and I'm reading and I get, I get one paragraph. I'm like, what the hell did he just say? You know, I knew it was something, but I didn't get it. 
So, you know, and great thing about Iwama is, you know, that, that was the, the, the 80s. Uh, there was no television. So <laughs> the books were our TV. So I actually started really diving into deep, you know, books and spiritual texts and philosophy and Japanese culture, et cetera. But, you know, I really started to awaken not just my, my, um, my physical skill. I guess I'd already always done that, but my, my intellect and my and philosophical understanding and, and the, the yearning that the seed that opened when I saw O sensei was a spiritual longing. There was no doubt about it. It somehow came together with this, this martial arts fantasy that I had as a child, but there was no doubt about it in my mind that there was a spiritual longing. And Peter's book was the first one that was like that, that could really kind of articulate those things together, even though I didn't understand. And he had a great saying. Um, he often quotes uh, from Isai Chozenchi. Chozenchi, I think is his name. And he says that the, 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 the mark of a true master is that he can take from the dregs of the ancients and extract pure liquid or clear liquid or whatever it was. Just, you know, you take the shit. And all of the, everything I learned in Iwama was the dregs of the ancients. It was the dregs. It was the leftovers. You know, it's that martial form that O-sensei kind of left for everybody. Saito-sensei, uh, in, a, in a beautifully didactic way, organized. And, you know, he, he also perfected the technical skill to quite a nice level. And he also had access to the principles for sure. But what was being taught there was the dregs. And I, you know, it takes a few years to learn the dregs and you get good at the dregs. And I just realized that, you know, the dregs only led me to the top of a wall and there was no clear wick liquid up there. And it was coming through to a certain extent, but there was something about that that was holding me back. And uh, that was always, that, that was, that, that was always a, a true north, you know, my orientation. But it got confused with a lot of other cultural stuff and Japanese stuff and technical stuff and this school and that school and, you know, the story. Until um, the suffering of being kind of hitting my head, bumping my head on the ceiling of the wrong wall um, just kind of propelled me to, to actually do deeper practice. And, and that to do that, I actually had to leave Aikido and go um, follow my, uh, more of a, a spiritual path. And I did some of that with Peter Ralston, you know, with his inquiry work and his intensive, his contemplation intensive, intensives. I had my first... Uh, 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 what I would call my first um, uh, non-dual uh, uh, awakening, which was really, it was, it was, it was blown open experience. After we had done like a, a I think it was a nine day Cheng Xing intensive followed by a nine day contemplative intensive. So I was with them for almost like almost three weeks. And then towards the end of that, I just blew open and, and I was liberated uh, for weeks afterwards and it was, you know, talking about you, you, the emotional freedom that I felt in just relating with people, uh, something I never really achieved in Aikido. And I knew that this was the, this was the path that I was looking for. And um, it did fade because it was, you know, it was something that still, at least in my case, you know, it, it did happen and it needed to be cultivated and developed over over. Years and, and but I was clear it was it was when I was leaving Japan and I was clear that I didn't that the next the next the next path on uh, um, on that kind of career path the Iwama career path was to go back to your country and open a dojo and that's even what Saito Sensei told me go home and open a dojo you know, go back to America and open a dojo but I just knew I couldn't I just knew I, I that I had to find that that deeper uh, spiritual essence wherever it was so uh, anyway, so I, I ended up going to Burma for the next, basically the next eight years, I was dedicated to the spiritual path and I was still kind of teaching Aikido uh, in seminars, doing tours around Europe, but I was really in Burma and Nepal doing a lot of deep meditation. And for the longest time, these were two parallel paths and they did not integrate. They didn't come together. You know, I was either um, practicing a spiritual practice or doing my Aikido practicing my spiritual practice, doing my Aikido. And it took some time before they started to actually weave together. And then I started to kind of get this idea of what this pure liquid, this clear liquid that came out of the dregs of the ancients. Um, I mean, it's a longer story than that, of course, but you know, I, was, I had teachers that were also pouring clear liquid down my throat, so to speak, drowning me in it, in fact. But it slowly started to become an expression of, of what I was doing as well, and um, more or less to some extent. <clears throat> And um, I have no doubt that, that what is beyond 
technique uh, is really the 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 orientation uh, sorry the essence of the art that that's really what we're doing everything else is kind of re it's almost like that this pen is aikido and it's a really nice pen it's one of my favorite pens actually i like the way it writes and you know it doesn't smear and everything you, you, i can take in the airplane and it doesn't you know it doesn't leak ink all over me and uh, it's a great pen but this pen is aikido and um and the world is i uh, sorry this pen is is the technical training or iwama style let's just say and the world is aikido they're really that different they're that the, the scale is that much different and yet most of us settle for this we settle for what's here you know, and that's ikkyo, nikkyo, sankyo. As you were saying before, you know, that we go, what was it, 10,001 nikkyos is going to lead us to the essence or to enlightenment or whatever it is. But you can't get there from here. It's, you're, you're, we're stuck here. So something has to happen. And that's the trickiest thing in the world. Either we get off the bicycle and we, we take it all apart, you know, or we go do something else. And in my case, that's what I did. I stopped doing Aikido. I went and did a lot of meditation. I was doing half the year I was doing Aikido, half the year I was meditating, so I was off the bicycle. Or we somehow try to kind of deconstruct the bicycle when we're riding it, which I find is a very, very tricky thing because when you're deconstructing your Aikido, that means that you're going to start letting go of technical forms. You're going to start challenging or questioning the status quo of your dojo, challenging, questioning the status quo of your uh, style, of maybe even your teacher, of the whole Aikido community. And the status quo is going to question you back. <laughs> and that's like, you've got to be one courageous mother to do that. You know, you've really got to be, that's the, the path of the spiritual warrior. So if, you know, the path of the spiritual warrior is nothing if it's not an inward path where you find this kind of true north and you, um, you know, not a narcissistic, oh, it's my truth, it's my truth, but actually something something deeper and and as i said before when i saw a sensei in a book a seat opened and i i many years later 30 years oh, actually it's about 40 years ago that i saw that that i saw it i'm only doing a keto 30 years but you know as many years before that i saw what i realize now what i was seeing and i don't claim to be anywhere near a sensei but what i was seeing was my potential you know, I saw him and I was reading the words. And I was just, I was just like blown away. It's like, oh my God, I want to move towards that. But what I was seeing was my very own potential in the future, meeting me in the present as a 14 year old boy. And it was like this calling that just, it drew me, it drew me, it drew me. And in, ever since uh, I was kind of moving towards my own potential and uh, Nisargadatta, no, not Nisargadatta, Ramana Maharshi says that uh, when you seek the grace of God, you can rest assured that the grace of God is also seeking you. So we can say, wait a second, I want to actually find this clear liquid. I want to move beyond the form, beyond the technique, beyond the style. And when we do that, that the status quo is going to bite back. It's really going to come after us. So it takes a lot of courage. But we have to have faith because it's really like stepping out there on our, on our own. We have to have faith that what is beyond, the thing that we are seeking is simultaneously also seeking us. As we move towards our potential, this kind of metaphorical clear liquid, mastery or whatever you want to call it, enlightenment, awakening. As we move towards it, it is also moving towards us. That I have no doubt about now. And, and as we start to get hits there, you know, in Aikido, to be honest, and more in kind of, you know, when you align with the principles, certainly in Jiwaza, two people coming together, uh, we start to kind of get hits of it. In music, jazz, I know you're a musician. Uh, when we start to get this creative flow with another person, uh, it's an amazing affirmation that, yes, this is the right path. This is, this is actually, this is so much more valuable than doing another Ikkyo. And I love... I love, the, I, I love the technical side and I love to perfect and tinker and try different styles. I, I, I love all that stuff. But what sustains me now in doing, I'm, I'm way past 10,000 Nikkyos, uh, whatever it is, you know, 100,000, I don't know. Sustains me? If, if, it, what sustains me in that is that I'm held by that clear liquid, you know, that that's beyond. And if it wasn't for that cl clear liquid, and to be honest, I've seen, you know, I've seen some, some, some you know, old timers who have done a hundred thousand nikyos without the clear liquid and um 
I always said the same thing. I said, well, you know, you know they're cool people. They're, they're all cool and great and I admire their commitment and everything. But I realized that's not, that's not the path that I want to follow. That's not the path that I'm on. I don't want to get to be, um, you know, 75 years old and do, do Aikido for 50 years. And, and when, it's at, when I'm at my end, to be terribly insecure because it's all falling apart. I'm going to step out of the picture, but I'll still hear you. Great. So, for me, what's really cool with Aikido, Richard, is that it's, it's you know, there, there's, that it's, it's the two coming together. It's one boundary and another boundary bumping into each other, having conflicting agendas, and working it out. And the principles of Aikido are the only way i'm not saying that it has to be aikido but the, the principles which are in many things the principles are the only way that we can actually work out and deal with our conflicting agendas in in a way where we actually come together into a greater sense of unity and um to be honest i notice many times there, there's a couple of phenomena in the aikido world Aikido culture that that i i, I have been as guilty uh, myself as anybody else uh, but a couple of phenomena. One is that you know, there's a certain uh, uh, conflict aversity. You know, a little bit of kind of a preference to avoid conflict in the sense that no, we're practicing the path of harmony. We have to be love, peace, and harmony. Aikido is an art of peace, as John Stevens uh, uh, translated. Which, on one level, I think it's a cool translation. Another level, I think it's actually a mistake. Because I think peace is a byproduct of what we're doing. It's not the path of what we're doing. I think we're actually walking the path of conflict. Meaning that when, when one boundary rubs up against another boundary, we work it out. We don't back off and, 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 and can say, you know, if you and I have a disagreement, the worst thing that can happen, the worst case scenario is that I dominate you. So I get 100% correct and you lose. Or you dominate me and I lose. The next best thing that can happen is that we agree to disagree. And I think, and, and, and when we agree to disagree, that means I take 50% of the satisfaction. At least I didn't, I mean, I know I didn't win, but at least I didn't lose. So I'm 50% satisfied, but I'm not really satisfied because you're still separate from me and you took 50% lose, but you didn't win either. And it's kind of this whole competitive thing. We become nice, friendly, but we agree to disagree. And there's this consensus, but it's still not a resolution it still equals 100%, 50% and 50% equals 100%. And for me, that is not Aikido. And I see that as one of the, one of the kind of common mistakes in, in, in the Aikido culture is that there's a little bit of avoidance of, of, of conflict because no, no, we're, we're walking the path of love, peace, and harmony. So we have to kind of not really get into it and fight and argue and, and uh, mix it up. But underneath, there's all this passive aggressive shit that's flying around the room and it's like, okay, whatever. I think that Aikido actually is the next step where um, we come together with our differences, our boundaries bump, bump into each other, and, you know, with our practice and with our skill, and to a large part, you know, through the grace of God, we work it out. And we, we come together in a higher harmony as a byproduct of the way that we face this conflict, this extraordinary part of this extraordinary listening that you always talk about. And it's, the, the beautiful thing there is that it doesn't equal 100%. It's not like you and I come together, we disagree, we work it out, and we come to a new harmony. It doesn't equal 100%. The sum of the parts do not equal the whole. The whole is 1,000%. That's the real resolution. We become, that's, what I, that's the gift of Aikido to the world. It's an explosion of a higher way of coming together that is multidimensional. It opens up in other uh, 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 other ways of functioning in the world. And, um, you know, part of the problem in Aikido is that it, there's a little bit of uh, uh, averseness to, towards conflict. We never get to there. The other problem is, you know, the fact that it's a martial art, you get a lot of egoic uh, kind of dickheads, you know. Mostly men, but, you know, it's also not men because, you know, women have their way of doing it as well. But we just disagree and and uh, and, you know, even though there's not competition, that's, that's a bit of a problem because if there was competition in Aikido, 
that shit would get sorted out very quick. But since there's no competition, people kind of, you know, just go in their own corners and their own camps and their own worlds and they just, you know, put each other down. So those are fine. It's kind of normal human behavior, but to really get to the clear liquid, you know, to get it to the place where Osensei, I, I assume, I imagine, because I didn't see him, um, but I think the, the, the greater potential of Aikido, this, this state of you know, true oneness, we have, to, we have to face conflict full on, you know, with, with, as, as spiritual warriors, you know, because it takes a, a certain, when, when I say spiritual warrior, I mean like full on masculine courage and complete feminine acceptance and patience and receptivity and you know, like that beautiful balance where, you know, I can enter into it and at the same time I can receive. I can disagree you, I can call you a motherfucker, but you're still in my heart. I don't throw you out of my heart. And that's, you know, that's a hard thing to do. You know, it, it takes a lot of, you know, we got to do a lot of soul searching and a lot of, a lot of work with ourselves really to be able to do that. And traditional Aikido doesn't do that for us. Let I, me, I, was, I was in Japan eight years. I didn't do any soul. I mean, I did soul searching, but there wasn't a single Japanese teacher. God bless them all. I love the Japanese teachers. There was not a single, they had great philosophy, great teachings. There wasn't a single one of them that modeled for me soul searching. Not a single one. Whereas Western teachers, there's been some beautiful examples of that. And some bad examples too. I just wanted to check logistically now. Uh, my understanding was we had till 8.40. That gives us about 10 minutes. Well, I've got a class in two, 32 minutes. So I just need a minute to change, and they're out there training right now. So. Uh, also, we, we may have to – they may cut us off at 40 minutes. We may have to reconnect. But I, I'd actually like to um, – I mean, I'm kind of laughing. It's like everybody starts with a kind of, well, why don't you, you know, interview me or help me get going. But <laughs> it's going – Everybody just takes off. So if I could lead you just a touch here. Yeah, sure. I, I just say if you just went inside for a minute, kind of maybe did a couple deep breaths or something, just kind of dropped where you are. And I'm also thinking maybe we just reschedule and do another session to focus this way because I, I want to hear your stories as well. Sure. I never know what I'm looking for until I start editing. And even then, it, sometimes the fifth or sixth time through, that I start to realize where we're going. I totally get it, yeah. And when I did my videos, it was like, it wasn't until the fourth shoot that I really started to think I was really getting close to what I wanted. But anyhow, if you just were to do your meditation practice for a minute, and I were to say to you, um, there are people who have never heard of Aikido or maybe have seen a couple videos or something of people doing just the technical side or the people who are doing just the technical side uh, and really weren't aware that Osensei said anything or that there was anything other than the fact that it was a pretty, you know, either people think it's a crummy martial art or a great martial art, depending on where you sit. But that's all they see. Uh, and particularly, I'm saying now, for people who really don't even know what you're talking about, Ikkyo and Ikkyo, that none of these words mean anything to them. And you're just sitting in a room here, and all of a sudden, one of them says, oh, I understand you do Aikido. What, why do you do that? What is that? What do you, what's that about? Well, that's the one where we use the other person's energy against them. <laughs> <laughs> against them, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, you know, because that question does come up quite a bit, and... and well, I mean, since you put it in that context, that question comes up with a lot of projections as well. So it's completely situational how, how to answer that. But between you and I, I would say that, you know, Marshall Rosenberg from um, NVC, Nonviolent Communication, when I first heard his kind of synthesis of what he's doing, uh, that it's a 100% um, life-affirming practice, it was like, well, that's Aikido. Aikido is a 100%, Aikido is the only 100% mar uh, life affirming martial art. Even something like, I mean, there's a lot of spiritual martial arts, don't get me wrong, but even something like Tai Chi, you know, the moves that they're doing in Tai here, this here I'm breaking the arm, here I'm smashing the nose, and it's beautiful, spiritual, and, and most people that do that never fight, so that's whatever they're doing is just an awesome exercise. It's life affirming for sure. But, you know, if you, if you, if you look at the design, 
not the design. Aikido was an expression of, of Osensei's perspective, of his awakening. And, you know, and we looked at it from the outside and say, well, shit, that design is fucking intelligent. It's, 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 it's elegant, it's, it's intelligent, and it's life-affirming. Nothing there is, is breaking or damaging unless you do it wrong. Unless you make a mistake or unless you, you're a bad scene, you bring a wrong intention, you know, into it. So um, in that sense, Aikido is, it is a Japanese martial art like many other martial arts, uh, but it's 100% li life affirming. And that is something that is, be, it, it's a whole new paradigm because it's really, you know, it's bringing most throughout history, most of the mystics that had this kind of, uh, mystical awakening uh, of, of the the universal nature of oneness, you know, where the subject object disappeared and it just existed as one in and of the universe. You know, the universe is in them and out of them, and it's moving through them, and it's all kind of one thing. Uh, most of them were profoundly peaceful. They just sit around and you know somebody would bring them tea and then there's food there and they eat and they go to the toilet and they sleep and then this is life is just a flow they're in this incredible flow they're not doing martial arts occasionally they're doing art but they're not doing martial arts and then oh sensei you know he did this thing and and he he had this this kind of uh this this timeless awakening that that you know throughout millennia that mystics have been having having and he was able to somehow manifest that as Aikido, somehow transmit that through what he was doing in the martial realm. And the effect of that is that it, 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 it truly created, he truly expressed a life-affirming martial art where it was fully Budo, fully martial, fully spiritual warrior, you know, and he was a, he was a warrior. He was a mystic, he was an alchemist, he was a tantric guy, he was amazing. Um, but he was also a martial artist. He was, a, you know, he, even if he never had his awakening, he was like apparently one of the, the top three martial artists in Japan at that time. And, um, and yet it, when he had this awakening, it came through and he was still fully doing this martial art, but it was, it was life affirming, 100% life affirming to the point that people, it, you know, he, he said it himself in his dokas and his poems that the moment somebody even has the intention to attack me, they've lost because they're attacking and he had, they're attacking themselves. And he had the perspective to see that there was no difference between him and others. And uh, somehow he was able to, to manifest that in, in, in fully facing people. And it was profoundly disarming. Even if they would do an attack, they wouldn't attack again because it, they just realized there was no, there was nothing to fight there. It's like, you know, literally trying to punch the air. It's like, it's even worse than that. You're punching yourself. You end up hitting yourself. So it completely disarm you. So what was your question? <laughs> I forgot. What is Aikido? <laughs> so the best answer that I can give, you know, I mean, Aikido is something to experience, yeah? And that's the beautiful thing. You know, uh, in Christianity, there's a saying, um, uh, I guess a saying from Jesus, that uh, when, two, when, when, two, when two of you come together in my name, I will be there. And uh, it's really beautiful. So when two people come together, really come together in the spirit of Aikido, not in the spirit of my style or my teacher, or my, my Ikkyo, your, your technique, my technique, but they really come together in the spirit of Aikido, Aikido will appear. You know, this, this kind of life-affirming message. And especially, and I go back to this idea of, you know, where I think Aikido has its greatest gift to humanity in the field of conflict. When we actually come together with that spirit of Aikido, you know, we, we say whatever, we can call it whatever we want, but there's an intention to actually come together in a higher way. And in the middle of all our shit, you know, wait a second, no, no, no. Um, when we really bring that in, it will appear. And that has a transformational effect on any, on any conflict. It, it affects the inside of me. It affects the inside of you. It affects, it affects what's happening between us, the conflict that's happening between us. It infects and affects the fields that, that, that surrounds us and that we are in. And it, and it truly does. I mean, I'm, I'm completely preaching to the choir with you. So, I, and I know... I mean, this is what you do in your work. I've seen you do it live and, you know, and I've done it with you, you know, not just on internet, but on the mat. 
but it's, it's just an amazing thing. When two of us come together in, in, in my name, I will be there. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a paraphrase, but it's true. You know, and, and when we come together in this, in this way of, with the intention of, of mixing it up in a completely life-affirming way, which sounds like a complete contradiction. How can you mix it up and still be life-affirming? Unless you're, unless you're making love, you know. That's the only other place you can do it. Were you with Patrick? He tells a story when I was in Switzerland. Uh, he said the first contact he ever had with me was I had written an article for uh, Aiki Budo magazine or something like that, or Budo magazine or something called uh, Aikido is a Venusial art. A what kind of art? Venusial. What's that? Venus, the goddess of love rather than Mars, the god of war. Right, right, and right. He said they laughed their asses off. <laughs> Oh, who that's is this guy? Quo. Yeah, that's you the status quo pushing back. Yeah, you were you were a pioneer there, Richard, for sure. Yeah. So, um, and and I'm just laughing, you know, because I said, you know, the funny thing is, most of those guys who were there laughing, they're still there, but you're here. Something happened. Something called you. Something's always called you. Yeah. I, this is a silly way to say it, but what is it you really want to say to everybody? What is it you really wish? everybody understood um, not about you not about your path so much as why it is you've chosen that path or what is it about Aikido that you think you know like I said to Chris at one point um, you know if we could if we could just move it a drop towards creating a be beautiful world it would be worth all the sprained wrists and sore knees we know you know how they say that like marijuana uh, the, the, the rhetoric is that marijuana is a gateway drug to whatever heroin or something? <laughs> For me, Aikido was a gateway drug. <laughs> totally, it was a, it was a gateway drug to spiritual to, to a deeper spiritual practice. That's great. I, and I, and I say that because um, Aikido, as I learned, uh, my first teacher was quite. He was he was working with uh, he was actually working with Don Juan. He 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 knew him. He was uh, he was kind of doing a lot of shamanic work. He had a lot of personal power. The, the, the particular style I, I felt didn't match his own personal power, but he was a very charismatic and, and uh, a beautiful teacher. Bill Sosa was his name, and he's, he passed away. But then I went to, I went to Japan, and, and it was not, not, not quite spiritual, you know. But that's okay. I was learning culture. I was learning a lot of stuff. But it was literally a gateway, and I had to go through all that before I realized that reaching that ladder and wanting to go, reaching the end of the ladder and wanting to – I had to kind of climb to another ladder – and um, it took me to, it took me to, you know, to what I came to understand was, was, was a authentic spiritual practice. And I mean that, I, I say that in the sense that the practice, that the techniques that I was doing, the methodologies that I was practicing would lead you to an authentic spiritual realization. Whereas the techniques have that potential, but it's not, it's rarely being practiced that way. And it's, a, and it's actually a lot of, it's a big kind of roundabout way to get to it, unless you have a teacher or, or an individual who's going directly for that. And um, I had not met anybody at the time who was doing that. And it wasn't until I, I started, I, I kind of practiced formal, form, I practiced formal Buddhist meditation uh, that I realized there was a lot of culture and a lot of trappings of, of spirituality that I had to kind of sort through, but at least the method was direct, you know, Vipassana meditation was really direct uh, uh, awakening of, of, of an inner insight. Uh, then I started to kind of understand that, um, and, I, and I, I literally changed ladders, even though I was still working with Aikido, I started climbing in another ladder, and uh, it, it was a ladder that leads, that, 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 that leads to the infinite, that is infinitely climbable there's no ceiling there then aikido it just flipped for me you know then the dregs became the clear wick the clear liquid started coming through the dregs whereas before i suppose there was some clear liquid coming through because aikido does have that kind of uh, there is that that it, there's some universal forms there that are really kind of coming it comes through quite naturally but um it, it didn't compare to um, the the spiritual path that I was practicing in Buddhism, and I was in a non theoretical school. It was total practice tradition, you know, the Mahasi tradition, and um, and Aikido was also total practice tradition, but it wasn't leading to a spiritual realization. And 
so they and again this is all my point of view you know i'm, I'm not so I'm i want to i want to go right there and say but now what you're yeah. describing and i mean yeah i know this is impossible but i'm yeah. going to ask you anyway so right. you could condense the essence of that into a pill to give to the other people how do you get there how do you what do you do to make Practicing, I mean, I believe you're right. O Sensei gave us an art. If you do it, you practice blending instead of opposing, you practice centering, all that stuff happens, but it can be a very slow hit. So I'm saying, what might you offer anyone who thought they might be interested in looking for more as to what they might do, how they might approach it? What what would help back to Lewis's question, you know, well, we dominate each other, but how's this going to create world peace? What is it that you do? What is it that you'd like to give people? And like I say, it's impossible to put into words, but nonetheless, I'm asking. What is the, the what's the goal? What am I asking? What's the goal? I heard the question, but what's the goal? Well, my sense would be uh, there are going to be some people who are going to listen to, and I'm in my mind, of course, I have no idea what I'll really excerpt, but I'm excerpting pieces of what you're saying in terms of what it points towards. And uh, Chris was saying, you know, Sensei's interview, someone said, well, is there a method? And he said, yes, there's a method. He said, can anyone do it? He said, yes, anyone can do it. He said, but then the interviewer didn't ask, what's the method? I'm asking you. <laughs> How do we get there? What do we do? What can we do in the way that we practice Nikyo or in addition to or besides practicing Nikyo, what's important to you that that you could help other people experience sitting here yeah. talking? I know it's well, okay. So uh, I'll, I'll try to reduce it to as few words as possible, so I can get essential. But but Aikido is a path. It, it, it is a higher path of, of spiritual development. You know, and the first step on any path of spiritual development is the first path, the first step on, on the path of Aikido as a higher spiritual development is, is a step of, of self-awareness. And that's simply getting, bringing your attention in, feeling the body, feeling the breath, feeling the center, feeling the senses, paying attention to what's going on in the mind. Centering yourself in your own awareness is the first step. And it's the foundation practice of all further evolutionary practices in Aikido. So that's the first thing that has to happen. And while we're doing that, we learn how to integrate it through all this kind of technical training that we do. And we learn how to do it while we're in intense relationship with another person, which is almost impossible because it's the antithesis of our biological conditioning. Another person, the moment they touch me, all my bells and whistles go off, and either I want to kill them, I want to run away from them, or you know, if it's the right magic there, I might want to make love with them. But those are, those are kind of the three basic, are, you know, I don't want to eat them, I guess, but those are the, those are the <laughs> options. <laughs> Fight, flight, freeze, the four Fs. Deep job, deep job, because of the four fight, flight, freeze, and procreate. Yeah, and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. That's that's our bio biological conditioning, and it's it's uh, hundreds of thousands of years of conditioning, and only self awareness will overcome that conditioning, and that's the first step. So we move from self awareness. It's it's your three steps, uh, um, uh, Richard. We move from self awareness into connection and intuitive awareness with the other person, and when me as an awake and aware individual connects up with you as an awake and aware individual, we start to create an awake and aware system and that's where it fucking lights up man and it's really that's the best that's the jazz that's where it really is and it's a shame if people don't get there it really is you know self-awareness you can do zen and you can do kind of cutting you know like like japanese sword work you can learn to cut people's heads off and you know life and death they don't exist it's an illusion and that's that's cool you know you i mean not cutting off people's heads but getting to the place where you're like so centered you don't you don't care if you live or you die that's kind of a cool thing. As a man, I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, connecting with another person, intuitively understanding what's happening in their world and being able to kind of move before they even move. You know, that's also really cool. You know, you're like, it's almost like you're psychic and you can, you can kind of, you know, you out-zen them in a way. That's cool. But when, when you're like in your, you get your total Zen on and you connect with me and I've got my total Zen on and we connect up in this like this creative flow it's 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 it, 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 dimensionality 
And that's really what it's about. That's like, you know, I'm not even a musician. I love music, but I'm not, I don't play music. But I see jazz musicians playing and, and I'm part of it. You know, it can be YouTube. They can be playing Happy Birthday. You know, Wynton Marsalis playing Happy Birthday with his six step, sex step or whatever it is. And I'm right there, man. I'm just like, I'm with these guys. And it was recorded 10 years ago or whatever it was. That's the gift of Aikido and, you know, in, in the world of conflict. And it's so awesome. And, you know, and that's, the, that's what's so cool. That's what's healing, Richard, because we can really hate each other and maybe want to kill each other. But if we can reach that point, man, we just love each other. And it's just, we just, we realize that this is, there's nothing, there's nothing. And it, it fucking disarms all of our history. You know? I mean, I know you know, I don't have to, it really disarms any history that we have. It's like, you know, oh my God, what are we talking about? It's, this, is, this, is, this is such a precious baby. And I guess on a global scale, it's, it's still very rare. You know, we can, we can do it with our friends and maybe with our lovers and maybe with our, in our culture. Um, I, I, we do it around football teams and stuff like that, but that's, that's always using it. There's a medium. If we remove all that shit, we just do it live, you know, between two people. That's amazing. But when we start awakening cultures, and I think every dojo should be a little hub, a microcosm of an ideal, a, a, an, an ideal of an awakened society, when that shit starts happening, and I don't know. What do you think? Do you think Aikido's going in that direction? It's like the telephone game, you know. And by the time somebody who's never seen uh, Osen say and never read the words and just learned some techniques is out teaching, God, what do their students get? So my sense is there is some life in the art, and yeah. and what it really could do, and what he really wished for. I think some of us are looking for. I think a lot of people don't even know about it. Some don't care, and that's fine. If you're just interested in the martial side, I have no problem with that. My yeah. problem is that there are a lot of people out there who know that it's the art of peace. It's a way of reconciling the world, but they're just doing Nikyo, and they don't know anything else, and they don't see a doorway. So my sense is, if you're putting in the hours, the sincerity, the sore knees, et cetera, yeah. uh, what can we share that would help you Look around and see what else might be there. Look around and explore the possibilities that might interest you beyond the technicals. And, and that's what I'm hoping we're doing here with this yeah. series and the concept of the larger network of you know, bringing everyone from different groups, you and... Right, yeah. You, Lisa, yeah absolutely. You, Lisa, whatever, you know, Strozzi, whoever. Uh, my hope is, is that all of us will touch each other's students, everyone will hear the multiplicity of voices and come away with something that leaves them one. But all pointing to the same thing. And this is what's great about you, Richard. You walk the talk and you talk the walk. So in other words, you, like when you're teaching or, or even your videos, you're, you talk a good game and then you, you show a good game. But, then, but the important thing is that you transmit what's ha what, you're, what you're actually inviting people into. And there's people that can walk a walk a walk and talk a talk and maybe even do those together. But without that transition, you know, you say, what can we do? Really that transition, man. It's like, it's like you know, if you've ever said it the, in, in, in the field of a spiritual teacher, like a blown open person, you're, you become like that, you know, in that field. And then you, you, you leave and you kind of lose it. But that transmission is, is really, really important. And just look at O-sensei. Jesus, he... he what was he, like 20, I don't know how many years, 25 years he was, he was teaching Aikido? Something like, I don't, maybe 30, I don't know what it was, 35, 40. I'm not a historian. But here we are 60 years later, 70 years later, and it's fucking there, man. The ripples are happening, and we're still doing it. That's a, that's a massive transmission, you know, and that's something that, that, you know, we, it's our duty to do the same. Yeah, I, I, in whatever way we can, you know, and really, and really sort out our own, you know, purify our egos and go through our shit and do some therapy, you know, let down the armor, all that, all that crap, you know, and still be, you know, bad motherfuckers and spiritual warriors and, but vulnerable and, you know. Well, my, my hope is, is that as you play through this game, you know, you, uh, you know, where Don Juan talks about you face your fears enough times, it begins to shrink. At first, it looms larger and then it shrinks. As you start to deal with your fear of being thrown hard or confronting someone or whatever, and more and more, you become a less frightened person. 
right. spirit, your heart starts to show through. That, that when all of us show our hearts to each other, when we are able to be true and authentic beings with each other, that Aikido will bear fruit in the world. The devil might yeah. down to defeat in Aikido. Will, the spirit will rise up in victory and Aikido will bear fruit. So that's, that's what I think we're, we're working on. And I think in our conversation now, this one in particular for other people, is to help other people see a path, explore it. Like I said, I don't care if they go through the door. I'd like them to know that there is an option, that there are some possibilities and these aren't even in any way the possibilities they're just possibly some of the possible possibilities uh let people explore much more of what the art offers because they put in so much time and so many sorties and so much energy right and on, yeah. clearly there but i feel a lot of them are getting like i say a two percent return on their investment when they could be a thousand percent Exactly, and 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 you know, it's like uh, the 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 barrier between where they're at and where they can be is is so thin. It's such a, it's such a right. the veil is like nothing, and it just takes a little bit of. That's my prayer. But I just want to say, hey, Richard, it was great talking to you. Thanks for the invitation. Thanks for coming, man. Great. Do it again soon. Talk to you soon. All right, man. Bye bye. Yeah, take care. Right.